hey, 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 what the heck? What the heck? Sorry, guys. No, I do understand that you are actually expecting me after lunch. But then Miss Cynthia was like, no way, I'm too busy. So Sam Numzani, you can take my class. Ma. You can howl as much as you want. But then I'm taking this period and I will be also taking the next period after lunch. So anything that has to do with food with you, involves Usem Numzan. Hence today and hence this period we'll be learning about agriculture. What is the agriculture? When you think about agriculture, you're definitely thinking about food or you definitely have to be thinking about farming. But don't worry guys, this period you should just take out your books Take notes. There's no classwork. There's no homework. Make sure that you take note. This is economic geography. It is very much hard to draw structures. You should take notes. All right, let's continue. So when we're thinking about farming, we know there are actually two types of farmers. There is a livestock farmer and a crop farmer. When you think about the livestock farmer, you definitely think about animal farming, breeding animal, milking of the kettles and everything that it comes with animals. Yes, guys, you are definitely right if you are thinking about that. Livestock farming speaks about animal farming. So they could use a kettle to do what? Produce milk, uh, produce cheese, and even worse, produce meat at the end of the day. Yes, meat lovers are so happy for that part. But then I'm not exposing anyone. Yes, and then we are moving to crop farmers. When we are speaking about crop farmers, we are speaking about people that are believing in the soil. They believe in the soil. They believe the soil has what they need, the money they need, the food they need. Yes, so it's an individual with belief that they can actually plant something and after some time, they could harvest it for either two things, for either to sell it or to eat right so they harvest or plant vegetation for two things either to sell them or to eat the crop farmers are doing it and they are making profit and also some are not making profit but then they are living sustainable lives because of they are not living with hunger so when we are speaking about the selling and the eating this reminds us of the concept of subsistence farming and commercial farming who remembers that everyone definitely have to because of when we speak about subsistence we are speaking about sam numzane planting his own vegetation so he could do what sustain himself even if not planting vegetation but then feeding what we call animal growing animals breeding animals to do what to eat those particular animals so they could sustain their hunger and they could live a longer life. And obviously, if Sam Numzane has some surplus when he was doing some crops there, he will obviously try and sell it. But then his focus, it is not to sell, is to maintain, sustain himself and also his family, which he has. The commercial simply means money, profit. Let's sell, let's make money, let's go outside, let's import, let's make money, yes. It's all about profit. So the subsistence, which is obviously providing for yourself, you can obviously sell the surplus which is from your farm to your local communities, but then it is not your focus. It's all about focus. The focus is to sustain yourself and your family, whereas commercial is to make profit and make money. Yes, guys, I definitely think you have obviously taken notes, such as livestock farmer. Guys, I'm not going to be writing. I'm going to be talking so this lesson can be a bit short, but then it makes sense. Said. All right, and now we'll be moving to what we call a small scale farming and a large scale farming. A small scale farming is definitely what you are thinking about. It definitely refers to the land, the size of the land. And obviously, if the size of the land it is very much small, that definitely means the output, the production out of that land will not be that much compared to our brothers in which we'll be 
speaking about them very much soon. Then now we know we are speaking about small land. The land is small. Production is small. Meaning the employment, it is small. They are employing family members, neighbors, people that are around the community, not people coming from different cities or you understand different towns. No, it is just based on that particular community, small scale farming. Yes, and they also increase employment. A bit of employment in that particular community can be increased. So obviously, when there's obviously that money, that money, that buying power, the community can also be uplifted because of people will obviously buy, buy from that shop at that casi and make more money. That shop will make more money. And then and like that, everyone wins. Then the standard of living tries to improve. So it obviously improves a standard of living for a, for a small portion of people, right? They do not have heavy equipment. They are watering. They are using small pipes, uh, small dams. Obviously, the watering can. There are no large machineries yet. And even chemicals. They are not using that much chemicals. They are traditional farmers. Yes, the small scale farmers are usually your traditional farmers. They are not using uh, the, the different kinds of medication and whatever that is used by the large scale farming. Thinking about the large scale farming, you definitely know the land it is very much huge. If the land it is very much huge, production it is high. So when there's production it is high, employment it is high. There's high employment here. There's a lot of people that are making money, paying tax, growing the GDP. And obviously guys, I have to remember that I'm obviously in South Africa and remind you that they obviously have to focus and you individually as south african grade 12 you should focus on the production that they are doing which is the corn production which leads to maize right and obviously the the the, the cattle farming which is obviously one of the curriculum in south africa and also the sugar cane because of you know we have different uh, climates we have summer spring autumn and winter so we do have different fruits and we can plant different veggies because of we have different seasons. Yes, guys. So the seasons are definitely a good thing for South Africa. And remember, a large scale farmer has money. So if this guy has money and is focusing on profit, obviously he has to buy machineries. He has a lot of machineries, trucks which are used for cultivating the land. He has a lot of chemicals, a, a lot of uh, genetic modified seeds that are, used, uh, that are used so that there could be no pests that could obviously eat whatever vegetation or crops that is growing there. And they usually are a mono, a monocultural, yes. But then some, some large scale farmers can be polycultural. You, you remember the mono and the polycultural, right? The mono meaning they plant one vegetation, right? They are focusing on one fruit, one particular, maybe fruits, maybe let's say an apple. They are focusing on apple. This whole farm is planting apples, right? And also they could focus on maybe veggies, maybe, you know, guys. But then when we are speaking about polycultural, they can plant banana, apples and do, but then separate them, obviously, with rows. And, but then it's more expensive to obviously have different uh, vegetation or different crops in one farm very much expensive than to just have monoculture because of there there's more money you are just uh, making more production focusing on one thing delivering on one thing but then yes guys everyone knows what to do to make money and to grow the gnp or the gdp guys i'm sorry because of this is economy I, I am speaking too much. You have to take notes. I, I do not care. You have to take notes. I'm not writing anything. For the first time ever, just like the video, subscribe to my channel without me writing a cent. Yes, I do not have to write anything for you to understand, guys. Yes, and there are obviously favoring factors for agriculture in South Africa. What are the favoring factors? The, the, the climate. We have obviously what we call different 
climate or different seasons guys we have different seasons we can plant as much as vegetation and crops different crops whether different fruits and different veggies as much as we can as much as we like because of we have all the seasons yes guys and also the transportation we have a better transportation in south africa and uh, we can trade yes we can trade more often we can transport the crops that are obviously have been harvested and obviously maybe the animals that have been breeded and their kids they are being sold to some place and stuff like that yes guys so our transport system it is not that bad and our government is also involved in obviously making sure that south africa has food to make sure that south africa has food it is investing a lot when it comes to the agriculture of south africa the government wants us to have food because of if we do not have food oh my goodness if we do not have food this will lead us to a lot of devastation i cannot compare countries but then it's it's going to be dark in here all right guys and also there are hindering things that you find in south africa that are disrupting the whole system of agriculture what's hindering this whole system obviously what we call climate change climate change is affecting the whole globe yes guys when it comes to climate change there's erosion there's rain when there's not supposed to be rain there's uh, uh, forest fires there's guys there's a lot when it comes to climate change the soil it is no longer that fertile because of there was mass movement and there's a lot of things that are happening to destroy what we call our precious fertile land yes guys and obviously our cattle and if there's flooding there's drought how are we going to eat those are some of the things that are hindering the whole food system or the whole agricultural system okay guys this video is just going to be a simple video a simple edit make sure you like this video subscribe to my channel because of you just have to put yourself in the shoes of education rather than to make sure that you cram whatever i'm saying it's not about what i'm saying or what you are reading it's about putting yourself in that situation to understand what i'm saying a little more better so guys yes please make sure that you continue watching close up education because of we are moving to what we call food insecurity and food security and